Good evening, everyone. We welcome you live to Marcellus High School for the News Channel 9 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Stephen Fonte alongside Mario Sacco as we get you set for 7-7 seven and seven Marcellus playing host to 10-4 and four Bishop Grimes. And Mario, both these teams playing awfully well of late. Both got off to slow starts for a variety of reasons. Bishop Grimes has won seven of its last eight. Marcellus has won six of its last eight. We should have a good one here tonight. Two teams trending upward right now, and as playoffs are right around the corner, that's the kind of basketball you want to be playing. You talked about a Bishop Grimes team that had won seven straight until they lost to Ludden uh, on Sunday, and this is a Marcellus team that started out the year 0-4, but they've won six out of their last game, last, last eight games are kind of finding that stride right now and it'll be a good measuring stick for this Marcellus team, a Class B team going up against a Class A team here tonight. Bishop Grimes started 2-2. Two and two. They played an awfully difficult schedule right off the bat. Opened up with Baldwinsville. Uh, lost that game 64-57. That was when Beeville still had the services of Cameron Weatherly. He scored 18 points in that game. They followed that up with back-to-back with -back wins over Tech Central and West Hill, which was a good win at the time. And then Grimes had to play uh, that juggernaut that is Albany Academy and, and actually didn't play all that badly that night. Lost by 20. Uh, Albany Academy is so good. Yeah, we saw they, that they against, against Bishop Ludden as well. Yeah, they've got three guys, legit, legit D1 talent on that team. Three guys that are probably going to D1 programs. Steve, you look at this Bishop Grimes team, they have a lot of weapons. If it be a David Moe, if it be, you know, a Jack Gutchess, a sophomore stepping into a role of a more scoring role. Uh, on this team over these last 10 games, or if it be a TJ Bradford. This is a team that last year went to the section championship game and, and lost to Utica Notre Dame. So they have the experience, they have guys that have been at that level, and can they you know, continue to carry it over and get ready for the playoffs here? And we'll find out against Marcellus tonight. And you look at and Marcellus, it's a team that not only started with a, a tough schedule, I mean, we've since learned how good Skinny Atlas is. That was their, their second game of the year. They opened with ESM. <laughs> ESM's playing for first place tonight yeah. against Jamesville DeWitt. Uh, we know West Hill's good. Yeah, first three games were ESM, Skinny Atlas, West Hill, and then SAS. They started 0-4. They had a variety of injuries, a, a couple of key players missing some time before the Christmas break. But now that they're healthy, now that they're, you know, they're used to one another, they're starting to come out strong. As I mentioned, they, they've won six of their last eight games coming into tonight. Well, Steve, you mentioned those first four games. You have Skinny Atlas and West Hill. You have two of the better Class B teams that, that might be fighting for a Class B title. And then ESM and SAS, two A schools that are going to be around when it comes to playoff time. So their first four games, it was, you know, throwing to the wolves, so to say. But they found their stride. I was late talking to Coach Cotter. He said, we were a young team that just needed to gel and, and develop, and you know they've been playing well. Six out of their last eight games, they picked up wins in. Marcel is coming off a 61-49 victory over Tech Central last time out. Bishop Grimes uh, fell to Bishop Ludden last time out. That was the the Sunday night game. Uh, lost 56-45. Cobras were one for 22 from three-point range in that game. You're not going to win too many games, especially against quality competition, when you go one for 22 from downtown. I mean, you can credit that a little bit to London's defense. They got up in your face and, and forced a lot of pressure and, and forced you to take those outside shots. But, you know, Coach McKinney's team likes to attack the basket, and when they're rolling, they're attacking the basket downhill, and I'm sure they're going to try and get back to that tonight. All right, we're getting you set for... Marcellus and Bishop Grimes boys basketball tonight here on localsyr.com. We're going to take a break for the national anthem. We'll come back with starting lineups and get you set for the opening tip. The Mustangs 7-7. Seven and seven. Grimes checks in at 10-4. and four. We're back after this. You're watching high school basketball on localsyr.com. Club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of ellipticals for all fitness needs. Take the hassle out of working out. All products sold by us are delivered by us and maintained by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Wood and Christy Casciano, Central New York's most experienced anchor team. Born here, raised here, stayed here. 
the ones you know you can count on. Trust the people of News Channel 9, the local station. Empower Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. Live Doppler 9, built in Central New York for Central New York. And only News Channel 9 has it. It's how we track storms before anyone else. If it's raining. If it's snowing. If a storm is on the way. The News Channel 9 storm team knows first. Local radar from the local station. Get Central New York's most accurate forecast in the palm of your hand. Download the News Channel 9 Live Doppler 9 app. Search WSYR in the App Store. Yes, wonderful. Story. That's great. All right, well, we're just waking up and turning on the TV. We've got headlines for you. Local weather, Kate? Oh, it's great. It's a little chilly out right now. Make it a good morning. The morning news on News Channel 9 starts at 430. Make your home your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. Welcome back to Marcellus High School. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you. The 7-7 seven seven Mustangs getting set to take on 10-4 Bishop Grimes. And you look at these starting lineups, Mario. Grimes starts four seniors and a sophomore. They've got the experience edge tonight. Marcellus starts four juniors and a sophomore. Yeah, just a matter of the experience in Bishop Grimes. And as we mentioned, the guys like Bradford, Mo down the line, the guys that have been there on the opposite side, Coach Carter says our guys are finally finding their stride. Matt Karshaw, he averages 10 points a game as he had a career high 20 against Casanova, but you know, they're relying on these guys in big moments and they've come up big over these last few games. Good turnout here by the Marcellus uh, student section as we get you set for Marcellus and Bishop Grimes. Cobras have the feel, uh, Mario, of a team that, that's going to be contending for a sectional title this year. And, and Marcel is trying to fight its way into the sectional tournament. You've looked, Steve, in, in that Class A bracket. When you look at a James Gold DeWitt, when you look at a Central Square, when you look at an ESM, when you look at a Bishop Grimes, there's no real separation in those teams that I mentioned. And I'm sure a couple of other ones could jump out at you. I mean, I haven't even mentioned a Utica Notre Dame or a Whitesboro who beat James Gold DeWitt uh, a couple of weeks ago. So. That Class A bracket is pretty much wide open as you know what the Class B bracket's going to go through. It's going to go through West Hill like it does every year. And, and is this the year that finally someone, you know, sneaks up and beats a West Hill team? And I'm sure Marcellus would like to put their name into the hat, so to say. Marcellus 5-4 and four in league play, 7-7 seven and seven overall. So they're in good shape to make the tournament. Got to win 40% of your games. Uh, they close out the season, though, with some, some very difficult contests. They've got Skinny Atlas in their second to last game and then at West Hill. Uh, to close out the regular season. We are underway between Bishop Grimes and Marcellus. The Cobras win the opening tip. Three-pointer from TJ Bradford off the mark. Marcellus has the rebound. That's Kyle Brown who clears it away for the Mustangs. There's Jared Salmon backing his way down, trying to muscle it up. Now Luke Ingiani turned away by David Sifanelli. David Sifanelli, great defender here for the Cobras. Now Salmon loses the ball, out of bounds, and it will go over to Bishop Grimes. So an empty possession by both teams to lead off the game. You mentioned uh, Sifanelli and the defense that he likes to play. If Coach McKinney says he's one of the best defenders that he's ever coached, and Coach McKinney's been doing it for a couple of years and had the guys with Brandon Trish and, and others go through his system. So uh, that's a pretty, that pretty high compliment. That is a pretty high praise given all those great teams that he coached over at JD and the last few years at Bishop Grimes. Uh, Bob McKinney in his 20th year uh, locally as a high school basketball coach. Shot off the mark, no good. Second crack doesn't go. Third time's the charm, though, as Jack Gutchis will draw the foul, and Gutchis will head to the free throw line for a pair. Marcellus giving Grimes right now that outside shot. He even got her up there. You know, he had a 15-footer, couldn't knock it down, but Grimes crashing the boards here early. 
and stepping to the free throw line is going to be Gutchess to shoot two. I mean, wouldn't that be your game plan coming in when yeah, a team two. just went yeah. one for 22 from three-point range? Make them make knock down a few. First free throw, no good from Gutchess. First shot they took was a three by Bradford uh, to start the game. So, yeah, until they start making a few, I, I would settle back in as well. Kind of like SU strategy against Duke. <laughs> Second free throw is good, and Grimes is on the board. They apply some full court pressure. And it's knocked out of bounds by Bradford. Marcellus will keep possession. Jared Salmon to trigger it in. We saw it in the JV And game. a steal right off the inbounds pass. Sifinelli off for Bradford. First bucket of the game. That's where you got to be patient with the ball. Great save by Gutchess to Bradford. Now Sifinelli drives. No shot, they wave it off, and the foul is charged to Tristan Jarvie. Steve, you know as well as I do in a zone, where do you, or in a pressing defense, where do you want to stay out of those corner situations and, you know, the last two possessions that Marcellus has turned the basketball over, they've got it deep into the corner, have gotten double teams, and, and it's led to two turnovers. The trap becomes really a, a triple team when you take into account the sidelines when you go to the, to the side. Shot was off the mark, the rebound to Luke Ingiani. And Marcel is still looking for his first points of the night. Here's Kershaw to Ingiani, being watched by Sifinelli. Boy, he really hounds you on defense, doesn't he? And it looks like another, more of a matchup zone right now, Steve. Another near steal. Although Sifinelli is following around Ingiani. Here's Kershaw, drives the lane, short with it. Rebound to Gutchess, out to Bradford, and here comes Grimes running in transition. Extra pass in the corner. Mo for three, doesn't go. High off the backboard, and there's a foul on the rebound. Good position by Jared Salmon, charged the foul to Jack Gutchess. If there is one guy on this Bishop Grimes team that has been hitting that outside shot consistently, it has been David Mo this year. He has over uh, 25 three-pointers on the season. Got a wide open look in the corner and hasn't knocked it down. They're now 0 for 3 from the outside He's to start the game. Mo's the team's leading scorer. This time, Marcellus does a better job breaking the pressure. Kershaw, double team, splits the double team, loses it, gets it back. Nice hustle by Kershaw. Now kicks it off for Salmon, who got in the air, and he drew the foul. Great recovery defense by Grimes of, of sliding to the ball. Um, is that time Salmon doing a good job of attacking the basket. As Marcellus will head to the free throw line, looking for their first points in the game. We've played over uh, two, two minutes. They said the foul was on the ground. So David Moe charged with the foul. Second team foul for Grimes, his first. And Marcellus triggers it in underneath the basket. There's Ingiani off the glass, doesn't go. Batted away, Sifinelli tracks it down. Here comes Grimes again, looking to push. Stolen right back, numbers if they hurry. Here's Salmon in transition, off glass and in. Went right at the defender that time and, and picked up the layup. Bradford drives the lane, dishes off basket and the foul, Gopperop gets it to drop and he'll head to the line trying to complete the three point play. That was all TJ Bradford though, slicing right down the middle of the lane and throwing a beautiful pass to Gopperop. Rop came in, averaging almost eight points a game. Coming off arguably his best performance in a Grimes uniform. Had 12 points, five blocks against Bishop Ludden over the weekend. He completes the three-point play, and the lead is four for the Cobras. Marcellus able to beat the pressure. Now Jarvi resets the offense to Ingiani. Back to Jarvi, being watched by Bradford. They play catch back and forth. Steve Grimes just tries to get you into that rat race. As soon as you break the press, you know, he you're kind of helter-skelter, and Marcellus that time doing a good job of, after they are breaking it, calmly setting up the offense and getting into things. David Sifinelli picks up his first foul. Team's third. We're three minutes into this one. Grimes with a four-point lead. Here's Ingiani. They work it down low for Kyle Brown, back to Ingiani being watched by Sifinelli in the corner for Kershaw for three, long with it. Offensive rebound, second try by Ingiani, and he drops it in. Kyle Brown doing a good job of picking up the 
missed shot, and Ngiani stepping back and burying the three. He had about he had four of them uh, against Salve earlier in the season. And boy, Marcellus needed that kind of settle down here a little bit. As you said, Grimes wants to push the tempo. Here's a Rop, thinks about a three, tries the three, short with it. Air ball, and the rebound goes to Ingiani. Marcel has baited him into taking that shot, and now the Mustangs have a chance to take the lead. We said they'll let Grimes shoot that all game long here early on if they can. Here's Jarvie, and he's tripped up. That's number two on Sifanelli, and immediately, Gus O'Connell jumps off the bench, and Sifanelli's going to come to the sideline. Nate Gay will also check into the game for Gopperop, excuse me, for David Moe. Moe's also got an early foul. Gay averaging nine points per game. He's third on the team in scoring, even though he doesn't start, comes off the bench. He's been very steady this year. Seven games in double figures for Nate Gay. So after the slow start for Marcellus not scoring in the first two minutes of the basketball game, they only trail by one, six, five here early on. Here's Ingiani, sets up the offense. We're midway through this first quarter. Mustangs a chance to take their first lead of the night. Kershaw. They are in a man-to-man -man defense, but it seems like they're switching everything. Here's Kershaw, gets by Bradford, and Bradford Swallows it up. Nice recovery by T.J. Bradford. Bradford goes coast to coast. Passes out for O'Connell. Good look at a three. In and out, no good. Rebound to Gutchess. Now O'Connell backs it out and resets the offense. Gutchess, spin move, doesn't go. The rebound to Salmon. Salmon called for the offensive foul. Nice job by Jack Gutchess. It's a little out of control that time by Salmon. And instead of pulling it out, it was pretty much a one on three. Gutchess slid over and took the charge. Going back to that Luggen game, Steve, now Bishop Grimes is one for their last 29 from behind the arc. Ian Denton into the lineup for the first time as Gopperop takes a seat. So Salmon has two fouls and he heads to the bench that's a big loss for Marcellus he's the team's leading scorer here's a three short with it from Gay and the rebound and the putback for Nate Gay no one boxing him out that time and Gay just followed up the miss and scored an easy two down low there's Ingiani in between three different defenders and he threw it away he was looking for Tristan Jarvie, and that's what Grimes does to you. They speed you up. He had a, a good, doing a good job right in front of us of breaking that press, but, you know, once that happened, they're throwing waves at you, Grimes is. They're not just throwing one or two guys at you. And that time, just too much, and he turned it over. Bradford hands it off to Gay, and he hits another. Four quick points for Nate Gay off the bench. Some instant offense for the senior forward. Said how solid he has been uh, over these last, you know, few games for this basketball team. Marcellus having some trouble with this pressure defense. 10-5 lead right now for Bishop Grimes. 2.25 to play here in the quarter. Jarvie plays it up ahead to Ingiani. Gutsch tries to draw another charge. Instead, Ingiani able to score. He's got five points. He leads all scores. And Grimes, their lead cut to three. Bradford makes it five at the other end. Steve, I feel like any time Bradford wants to get in that lane, he can tonight. That time floating in the air for two more. He's got four in the basketball game. There's a foul against Gus O'Connell. Fifth team foul for the Cobras. Just over two minutes to play in the opening quarter. Grimes by five. Grimes has won seven out of their last eight games. Boy, Marcellus has won six out of their last eight. They certainly make you work to get the ball across half court. Now Marcellus into the offensive end. Ingiani thinks about the three. He's already got one of them. Directing traffic. Now comes for the near side to Matt Kershaw.
Eight to shoot. Kershaw dumps it down low to Regalia. Now Kershaw for three. Good look at it. Doesn't go. Rebound batted around. Out of bounds. They're going to say last touched by Grimes. I think Marcel's caught a break on that one, but the Mustangs will get a fresh shot clock. Kershaw having a rough go of it here early on for Marcellus came in as their second leading scorer. The sophomore has yet to get on the score sheet here as Grimes has been doing a good job of forcing him to that outside shot. Gutchess takes a seat as Nechi Cook is in the lineup for the first time for the Cobras. Kershaw plays it off for Ingiani. Between the legs dribble. Being watched by Bradford, 15 to shoot. Just over a minute to play in the opening quarter. Kershaw to Ingiani. Dump it down for Kyle Brown. Nice move along the baseline by Matt Kershaw. Somehow slithered his way in there. And Matt Kershaw on the board. Mustangs within three. Bradford looking to answer at the other end, along with the three. Gay, another offensive rebound. Puts it right back up, doesn't go. Rebound to Marcellus. Kyle Brown clears it away. And now the Mustangs, chance to tie with a three. Kershaw to Ingiani. Puts the ball on the floor. Draws the double team. Being watched by O'Connell. Pass tipped. Jarvie looking down low, and it's knocked away. Good hustle by the Mustangs, and Kyle Brown draws a foul. A lot of questionable passes there by well, if it first started to be in Gianni and, and then, you know, down low, Jarvi threw a tough one to handle, but falls into the hands of Brown, and he'll step to the free throw line to shoot two. And even though it feels like Grimes controlled this first quarter, here we are with 18.9 to play in the opening quarter, and Marcellus a chance to cut it to a one-point game. First free throw from Brown is good. Brown averaging just shy of six points per contest. Big kid, Steve. Uh, like him out there, there's a nice tight end for this Mustangs football team. And he's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. Made the game winning free throw over Cato earlier this season. Second free throw, good as well. And just like that, the Mustangs are to within one. There's Bayern Magushu into the lineup for the first time. Cook for three, off the rim, doesn't go. Six seconds, Mustangs have to hurry. They can take the lead with a basket. Here's Ingiani, launches a three at the buzzer, short off the rim. And that brings us to the end of a very entertaining first quarter. Grimes with a 12-11 lead. We're going to step aside. We'll be right back. You're watching... High School Boys Basketball on LocalSYR.com. Empower Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Make your home your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. Welcome back to Marcellus High School. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you on localsyr.com. Grimes with a 12-11 lead. Marcellus will get the first possession of the second quarter. So again, felt like Grimes controlled that first quarter of action. Uh, credit the kids from Marcellus, though, hung in there. They were able to, to stem the tide there in the early going, and, and now they've got a chance to take the lead here on the first possession of the second quarter. 6-2, Steve, to start the game. It, it took Marcellus two, almost two and a half minutes to score their first basket, but they settled down. Uh, they got used to the Bishop Grimes press, and they've done pretty well over this uh, you know, last quarter now. And Regalia gives Marcellus its first lead at 13-12. 
There's Gay for three off the mark. Cook tracks down the rebound. The outside woes just continue right now for this Grimes basketball team. Nice pass by O'Connell, but Gay couldn't handle it. And here comes Gaparop back into the lineup as Nate Gay takes a seat. Gay and Bradford leading Grimes right now with four points apiece by both of them. Leading the way is Ingiani for Marcellus. He had five points in that first quarter. There's a steal off the inbounds pass. Mo has it ripped from him, and they're going to call a jump ball. Look like Mo might have got held, but uh, jump ball instead. Grimes will keep possession. One point lead right now for Marcellus, their first lead of the basketball game coming here early in the second quarter. The Grimes coaches uh, to our right certainly think that he was held on the play. I can tell you that. There's Cook for three. Off the rim, doesn't go. Long with it. And the rebound to Kyle Brown. Marcellus content to give the Cobras that three-point shot. And so far, the strategy's working. Kershaw. A little short pull up, doesn't go. Gaparop, strong rebound, and now the Cobras look at a run. Magushu plays it off for Cook. Magushu in some trouble, kicks it in the corner. Open look for O'Connell, and he knocks it down. Snaps a one for nine streak for Grimes from the outside. Cobras back in front. Regalia can't get it to go. Cobra's another rebound, and there's a foul against Connor Regalia. Everybody looks like they're okay. David Moe took a tumble, but a couple of big bodies <laughs> hitting the deck right in front of us. Glad well. to see he's okay. And now TJ Bradford to trigger it in right in front of our broadcast location here. 6.33 to play in the opening half. Grimes with a two-point advantage. Bradford came in averaging 14 points a game, their second leading scorer. Comes off the high screen, pulls up, now drops it for Arop. And the shortest guy in the court gets the offensive rebound, Magushu. Snuck in there and took it away. There's been one thing that Marcellus has struggled here early on. It's been on the, you know, defensive side getting the rebounds. There's a steal, Tristan Jarvey goes behind his back. Dishes off to Regalia who spins, can't finish. Bradford the rebound. And they throw it away. Ingiani comes up with it. Let's see if he slows it down. Indeed, he does. There's no one looking that time. Bradford throwing it into no man's land. Ingiani called for the offensive foul. Pushed off with the free arm. Doesn't like the call, but Grimes will get the ball back. 15-13 lead right now for Bishop Grimes. 5.50 left to play in the second quarter. And we'll be shooting free throws the rest of the first half. Both teams with six fouls. But both teams in a man-to-man -man right now. Magushu plays it off for Cook. Nechi Cook to Gaparop, thinks about a three, tries it, short with it. Bradford the offensive rebound. Bradford back up, gets another offensive rebound. And it's an offensive foul, so same, same kind of play from the last possession. Ingiani was called for the offensive foul, and then that time, Ingiani drew the offensive foul. And that time, Bradford, after he picked up the second rebound, kind of tried to lower his shoulder and go up through the guy, and the ref was right there to call it. Bob McKinney calls him one of the best rebounding guards in the area. Hard to argue with what we've seen so far tonight. As a team, this Bishop Grimes team rebounds very well. There comes the double team. Here's Ingiani, open look at a three, fires, doesn't go. Rebound to Mo, and Regalia called for the foul, and that will send David Mo to the free throw line for a one and one. Mo has been held scoreless here in this basketball game as he steps in the line, came in averaging 15 points a game, has yet to score. Oh, we're being told that there that is the sixth team or that that's the sixth team foul so we do not have a one on one scoreboard was wrong on that so the next foul Grimes will be shooting a one and one right now they have the basketball leading by two we were not the only ones confused both <laughs> benches confused as well there's Bradford along the baseline strong move for two 
for TJ Bradford. He leads all scorers with a half dozen. You gotta try and get the ball in his hands as much as you can. You know, just the explosiveness that he has. And a five second violation on the inbounds. And Bishop Grimes gets the ball back. Probably about a half dozen turnovers right now for Marcellus in this first half. There's Bradford. Pulls up, 15-footer. Does not go. Cook keeps it alive, and Bradford tracks it down. Credit that one to Cook, though, crashing the boards and forcing that loose ball. Deep three from David Moe, and he drops it in. First points of the night for David Moe. And largest lead for the Cobras, up to seven all of a sudden. Marcella scored the first basket, and now Grimes on a little 8-0 run. And David Moe called for the foul. He was sitting there waiting for, waiting for him to throw over the top of that, and his hands are straight up in the air, and they call a personal foul, as that'll send Marcellus to the line to shoot a one and one Second foul on David Moe. And as you mentioned, Marcellus will head to the free throw line. And it looks like Grayson Hogue will get the one and one. Hogue comes in averaging about nine points per contest. Senior scored a season high 24 points against Hannibal earlier in the year. Perfect on the first, he'll get another. Marcellus really needs these two points to stop the run. Again, Grimes had scored eight in a row. You mentioned Marcellus took the lead the first you know, 15 seconds into the second quarter and didn't score since. These are their first points. Second free throw rims out on Hogue, so it remains a six point advantage for the Cobras. O'Connell has it knocked away. Quick hands from Tristan Jarvie. Now Jarvie. Looking for somebody to pass it to. Now it finds Matt Kershaw, and Kershaw resets the offense. We are midway through this second quarter. Four minutes to play. Grimes by six. Brown, nice post position down low. Kyle Brown has four, and the deficit is four. Grimes looking to answer quickly back the other way, and they do. Jack Gutchis with his first field goal of the night. Running the floor and beating everyone down the floor, and Gutchis had the inside position and laid it in for two. I'm surprised on the Marcella side. We haven't seen more of that going down low to Brown. A big boy going up against Gopperop down there. And Gianni kicks it in the corner for an open look. Three-pointer in and out as Tristan Jarvie tried it. Now Bradford attacking back the other way. Loses it. A rop right there. Blocked by the rim. And Jarvie clears away the rebound. Now Jarvie pushing in the corner. Three-point attempt. Does not go from Hogue, and now Marcellus will reset and get another possession. Hogue gets another look. This time he drops it in. Grayson Hogue for three. And the lead is three for Grimes. Timeout Marcellus will take it with him. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on localsyr.com. to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back. Four million dollars to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. Welcome back to Marcellus High School. 2.57 to play in the opening half. Bishop Grimes with a 22-19 lead. Every time it feels like Grimes is on the verge, going on a little run and creating some separation, uh, Marcellus responds. And that time it was Grayson Hogue. His first three-point attempt off the mark from the corner. He stayed there. Nobody picked him up. And Grayson Hogue got a wide open look at another three, knocked it down. And then Scott Cotter called a quick timeout. And Marcellus will remain in a man-to-man -man defense. A couple of turnovers and a, a couple of uh, you know, missed opportunities and second chance points for Marcellus as it led to this mini run. And Grimes has hit a couple of threes, but again, struggling 
to some degree from the outside. Another steal for Marcellus. Kershaw now in traffic, takes all the way in, slicing through the lane, doesn't go, cook the rebound. He had Bradford but didn't see him. Now O'Connell circles back around. And Bradford calls for the ball, resets. He's now directing traffic as we approach two minutes to play in the opening half. Gutches, work a down low. Oh, nice nice feed to Cook, lays it up in and the foul. Beautiful feed from Jack Gutches to Nechi Cook. Gutches wanted it on the blocks, got the ball on a strong post move, lowered his shoulder into the middle of the lane and then found a cutting Cook down low for two. He'll step to the line to try and compete. Complete the three-point play. Right now, Bradford leads all scores, and TJ Bradford with six points in this basketball game in Gianni. Leads Marcellus with five, all those coming in the first quarter. And Cook right at his season average with that one play, the basket and the foul. He's on the board with three, and the lead up to six for the Cobras. Bradford knocks it away, gets it back from Gutches, skies to the rim and throws it down. TJ Bradford, the dunk, and he draws the foul. Woo. Look out below, TJ Bradford raising up and slamming it down. He's got eight points. You knew that trap was coming right here at half court. Gutches and Bradford baiting uh, uh, the Marcellus player into that, forcing the turnover, and Bradford just throwing it down with authority. He's got four. 20 plus point games on the season. Season I 26 came against FM. He's off to a great start here tonight. He's got nine points with that free throw and the Cobra lead is up to nine. 28-19. So just, just as they cut it to uh, six points, it's now up back up to nine. Another near steal and Magushu charged with the foul and that should send Ingiani to the free throw line. It's a five point game, we're 24-19 and since then Grimes regaining control as this is in Gianni steps to the line. As I mentioned the leading scorer in the basketball game for Marcellus with five points looking for his first points here in the second quarter. Came in averaging eight points a game. I feel he's probably just getting back into his groove. Coach said he, he missed a couple of games, missed four games before the Christmas break with a stress fracture in his foot. So, you know, trying yeah. to work back into things right now. He had 17 against Salve earlier in the year. I was going to say that first game back, he certainly yeah. came back and made his presence felt immediately. 17 in his return as he makes the first free throw. So, Luke Ingiani gets another. Second free throw good as well. So he has seven points to lead Marcellus, and we've got another timeout, 154 to play in the opening half. 28-21 Grimes will step aside. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on localsyr.com. Make your home your house club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of ellipticals for all fitness needs. Take the hassle out of working out. All products sold by us are delivered by us and maintained by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Welcome back to Marcellus High School, 154 to play in the opening half as the host Mustangs trail Bishop Grimes 28 to 21. And again, this feels really like the third time tonight, Mario, that Grimes is on the verge of creating separation. The other two times, Marcellus was able to get right back into the game. I think that the final 154 this half gonna be very telling as to whether or not we have a, a close second half. It's a seven point game right, right now with 154 to play. And what's been the strength here of this Grimes team? It hasn't been the outside shooting. I think they've hit two, two out of maybe 10 threes. It's been the in defensive pressure. It's been the defensive pressure, forcing turnovers. And it's led to, you know, if it be easy baskets the other way or, or right now Marcellus had a tough time of breaking that pressure. And when they do, they've been forcing and rushing shots. When they haven't been doing that, running their offense, it's led to some baskets. And you can see how things can snowball against this team because in order to press, they gotta make baskets. And when they and when they make baskets and they press, it generally leads to good things. Gay was off the mark. Gutches 
can't get it to go. And somehow Ingiani comes out of there in between three different guys. And now Marcellus has numbers. Spin move. Up and in. Pretty move from Matt Kershaw. Another Helter skelter back and forth we went, and Kershaw just going to go straight to the tin and kiss it high off the glass for two. There's another example. Grimes had a chance to go up by nine, had a couple cracks at it. Marcellus able to make a stop and go right down and score. Gutch's call for the offensive foul. Swung his elbow, doesn't like the call. Looked like he hit Liam Tierney in the cheek with his elbow. And Gutches can't believe the call. He's got two fouls now. That's a tough one because as an offensive player, you, you know, you have position. You, you're trying to make an offensive move. And, you know, just a fortunate, infortunate elbow, so to say, uh, for Gutches that time. Incidental contact, yeah. but the ref saw it as an offensive foul. And, and uh, over the last few years, you know, you can't swing the arms anymore no matter what you're doing. Tell you what, if that was the college game, they would have went to a review and yeah. looked at it to see whether or not it was flagrant. There's Bradford. Nice dish to Gay for the basket. Pretty play. Gotta like the assist from TJ Bradford. And Bradford gets in that lane. It's been trouble for Marcellus. And another steal, although it's stolen right back. Tristan Jarvie takes it in. The layup is good. Jarvie's first points of the game. Marcellus hanging around. Strong drive by Bradford. He's now into double figures with 11. The lead up to seven as we approach 30 seconds to play in the opening half. Stolen by Magushu. Three on two for the Cobras. Gay can't quite track it down. And Marcellus gets the ball back with 19.1 seconds to play in the half. Steve. You've played, you, you see them breaking the press here, but as soon as they get across half court, Grimes is doubling right there. You know, you gotta have some patience. Get it to that outside and drive and attack the middle. Here's an open look for three. Jarvi long with it. Rebound to Kershaw. Seven to play in the half. Now in Gianni, four. Somebody's gotta put it up. Kershaw drives the lane. Nice dish. Can't be handled though by Grayson Hogue as time expires. Hogue just couldn't quite haul in the pass. And that brings us to the end of a, a very entertaining first half. Bishop Grimes has been in control, but the lead is only 7, 32-25 at the break. We're going to take a timeout. We're back after this. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on LocalSYR.com. Our Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Make your home your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson.
Welcome back to Marcellus High School. We are at the half with Bishop Grimes holding a 32-25 lead again. Grimes uh, came into this game uh, following a tough loss to Bishop Ludden on Sunday. Shot one for 22 from three-point range, and, and those struggles from the outside uh, continued to some degree in that first half. They knocked down a couple, um, but again, if, if Grimes was, was able to make that three-point shot on a regular basis, this lead would be double digits right now. But again, credit the kids from Marcellus. They were able to hang in there in that first half. Grimes sped up the game, you know, forced turnovers in that first half, and that's giving them the lead in this basketball game. It definitely hasn't been the outside shooting. I think they only have two threes uh, in this basketball game. They've been led by T.J. Bradford, the senior. has gone off in that first half. He's got 11 points here in this basketball game. Nate Gay is the second-leading scorer with six for Grimes. But as you mentioned, Marcellus, every time that Grimes seemed to be wanting to pull away in this basketball game and, and push it maybe to double digits, Marcellus has done a good job of hanging around and right now it's only a 32-25 here game at the half. Leading Marcellus is uh, Ingiani with seven points. Yeah, and maybe Grimes was settling for the three a little too much in that first quarter. I think they've done a, a better job getting to the basket uh, in the second quarter. Y you're right, they have just two made threes. Gus O'Connell knocked one down. Uh, David Moe hit a deep one uh, from the wing. But besides that, they, they've done most of their damage going to the basket and most of their damage on that press. And as I was saying towards the end of that first half, it's easy to see how things can snowball against Bishop Grimes because in order to press, you got to score. And then you score, they set up the press, they're able to get some steals, they get some easy baskets, and all of a sudden, you know, you're on a 6-0 run or an 8-0 run in, in the blink of an eye. And, and we saw that on a couple of occasions there in the first half. If you're this Marcellus basketball team, Steve, how do you how do you not get into that rat race when, you know, you, you got them pressing you in the corners after made baskets, as soon as you cross half court here, you know, they're trapping at all opportunities. If you're this Marcellus basketball team, you want to look maybe to get that ball inside, to give Brown a couple more touches down low, to expand this defense, so to say, and make them guard you from sideline to sideline. And you said it there a, a couple minutes ago that you said that, you know, that, that defense of Grimes, it's, it's relentless. The press doesn't give up when the ball passes half court. They continue to come after you. And so that's it's not like you can take a deep breath when you <laughs> get the ball over half court because they're still trapping, they're, they're still pressing, they're still trying to tip the ball from behind. And, and you get over half court, you you know you need to, to be aware that, that another double team might be coming. Yeah, and, and it's not you know once you get across half court, let's let's attack the middle middle of this defense because that's where you know the turnovers have come when when Ingiani has gotten across half court and trying to attack. It's Grimes throwing waves at you, not just one guy, two guys, three guys. You know, pretty much going after the basketball and forcing turnovers from this Marcellus team. On the defensive side of things for Marcellus, they just need to hit the boards. You know, second chance opportunities have killed them. In this half, we've seen Bradford, you know, handful of rebounds on the uh, offensive glass for Grimes. Cook doing a good job of, of getting uh, rebounds on the uh, offensive side for Grimes. So, you know, take care of the basketball offensively, which is easier said than done when a Grimes team is pressing you all game. And defensively, you know, hit the boards and limit Grimes to one shot. A lot of athletes on the floor tonight a lot of talent on, on both teams uh, the best player on the floor so far has been tj bradford uh, scored 11 in that first half and uh you know this kid is such a dynamic player anytime i feel that he can get to the hoop it's been causing problems all game long for this marcellus team if it be you know getting to the hoop and scoring we've seen a couple a of couple great, nice passes, great, yeah. great passes and, and defensively uh you know hounding whoever it be if it be kershaw on the on the defensive side and Throw in one highlight real dunk that you'll see later on tonight on News Channel 9 again. And and, and remember, they, they did most of that without David Sifanelli, their best defensive player. He Picked got two, two fouls. early fouls and, and went to the bench. And now he's going to come off the bench here to, to start the second half. And, and so defensively, Grimes was so good in that first half. And they did it without, you know, Bob McKinney called him one of the best defensive players he's ever coached in 20 years. And he was sitting on the bench for most of that first half. He's sitting on the bench, but, you know, Coach McKinney's teams, he's got other guys that he could throw in, and we saw Nate Gay come off the bench and What's score the point? four it's, quick points. He so didn't even miss yeah. him, and, and yeah. he's, he's arguably the best defender on yeah. the team, and now you get him back to start the second half. When you look at the, the, the Grimes team uh, this year, you know, we talked about they've won seven out of their last eight games with their lone loss coming to Ludden, and you've seen them now for a quarter play. What makes them successful is, is turning teams over and getting to the basket, and you, you got to thank Coach McKinney. He says, all right, enough. We're done settling for threes. Let's attack the basket and, and continue to force the pressure here in the second half. All right, we're going to take another timeout. Again, we are at the half. Bishop Grimes with a 32-25 lead on the Marcellus Mustangs. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you. Thanks so much for joining us. We're back after this. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on LocalSYR.com.
Club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of ellipticals for all fitness needs. Take the hassle out of working out. All products sold by us are delivered by us and maintained by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Rod Wood and Christy Casciano, Central New York's most experienced anchor team. Born here, raised here, stayed here. The ones you know you can count on. Trust the people of News Channel 9, the local station. Empower Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. Live Doppler 9, built in Central New York for Central New York. And only News Channel 9 has it. It's how we track storms before anyone else. If it's raining. If it's snowing. If a storm is on the way. The News Channel 9 storm team knows first. Local radar from the local station. Get Central New York's most accurate forecast in the palm of your hand. Download the News Channel 9 Live Doppler 9 app. Search WSYR in the App Store. Yes, wonderful story. That's great. All right, well, we're just waking up and turning on the TV. We've got headlines for you. Local weather, Kate? Oh, it's great. It's a little chilly out right now. Make it a good morning. The morning news on News Channel 9 starts at 430. Make your home your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. Welcome back to Marcellus High School. We are at the half with Grimes leading this one 32-25 as we take a look at the first half scoring. I mentioned T.J. Bradford, best player on the floor in that first half, no doubt about it. He scored 11 to lead Grimes to lead all the scores. Nate Gate chipped in with six points off the bench. Remember, he's the third leading scorer on this team despite the fact that he comes off the bench. And then a whole bunch of guys with three. Gus O'Connell, Nate Cook, David Moe, Jack Gutchis, Gaparop, all with three points. A balanced attack for Marcellus as well. Luke Ingiani leading the way with seven points. Matt Kershaw, Grayson Hogue, Kyle Brown, all with four. And then two apiece for Tristan Jarvie, Connor Regalia, and Jared Salmon. And again, some foul trouble on both sides. Salmon had to leave with two fouls. Sifanelli had to leave for Grimes with two fouls. As the starters return to the court now as we are set for third quarter action. Mitchell Grimes will have the ball here to start in a seven point lead. Check that, it's actually Marcellus who has the ball to start. If you're Scott Cotter, what do you tell your team coming out of the locker room here as you, you get set for the second half? Let's get the ball inside a little bit. Let's, let's give Brown a couple of touches down low and, and, and work from there. Maybe draw a couple of uh, fouls and, and put them more into foul trouble. Awesome right, Jack. Awesome right. Here's Salmon. Again, Salmon and Sifanelli both back out there after their early foul trouble. Now Salmon cut off by Gutchis. Kershaw. Ten to shoot for the Mustangs. Salmon gets into some trouble. Has it slapped away. Saved. Five to shoot. Ingiani notices the shot clock blocked by Sifanelli. Bradford back the other way, two on one. Bradford takes it all the way in. Boy, he made that look easy. There's your defense by Sifanelli. You know, Ingiani looked like he might have had a little space in the lane. Sifanelli says, nah. -uh. Marcellus able to break the pressure this time. Kershaw back out to Jarvie, and Jarvie will reset. Mark, 
Kershaw drives the lane, kicks it out to Ingianni, stolen away, and watch out, David Moe skies in, throws it down. And a quick timeout by Scott Cotter. It's a full timeout. 36-25, Grimes builds a double-digit lead with 6.48 to play in the third quarter. We'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on localsyr.com. Your home, your house club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. Rod Wood and Christy Casciano, Central New York's most experienced anchor team. Born here, raised here, stayed here. The ones you know you can count on. Trust the people of News Channel 9, the local station. We're back at Marcellus High School. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you. 6.48 to play in the third quarter. Grimes has opened up an 11-point lead, scoring the first four points here in the second half. Scoring the first four points off two Marcellus turnovers. Uh, I think it was a great timeout by Scott Cotter. Yeah, he was about to get out of hand, you know. One of the forced turnovers was off a block shot going the other way, and then, you know, Marcellus is not taking care of the basketball. Marcellus able to break the pressure, although another near steal on that secondary pressure, as you called it there in that first half. Here's Ingiani being hounded. Boy, they make it tough on you. You just, you, you, you see it here in a minute as Kershaw pulls up and misses the jumper. Good hustle by Kershaw to get it back, though. Now Jarvie back to Kershaw. Open look at a three. Got it. Boy, they needed that. Kershaw with seven, he's tied for team high honors. A rock, can't haul it in. Now Jarvi pushing for Marcellus. Salmon, and he's fouled. And that's Sifanelli's third. So Sifanelli picks up his third. The point I was trying to make is, you know, after you break that initial press and they're throwing those waves at you, you gotta have your head up. You, you gotta have your head up and look, Marcellus right now is getting in the lane with your head down. And as soon as they pick their head up, there's two other Grimes players right there to force a turnover. And Gianni being watched by Sifanelli. Bradford got a piece of it. It will stay with Marcellus. So again, Mustangs continue to hang around. Down only eight. Trailed by as many as 11 in this quarter. Jarvi has a step on Sifanelli. Kershaw thought about a three, then thought better of it. Here's Ingiani being watched by Mo. Salmon, team's leading scorer. He's been pretty quiet tonight. Part of that was the foul trouble. Now Kershaw drives the lane against Sifanelli off glass and in. So Matt Kershaw picking up his play here in the second half. He now has nine. The sophomore going hard to the hole. Bradford looks to answer, he's fouled. Pushed on his way to the basket by Tristan Jarvey. Kershaw up to nine points in this basketball game. Really does feel like anytime Bradford wants to get to the basket, he can. First free throw is good from TJ Bradford. And he surpassed his season average. Came in averaging 13.8 per game. He's now up to 14. On pace for his fifth 20 plus point performance of the season. Second free throw from Bradford, nothing but net. 38-30 lead right now for Bishop Grimes. There's Kershaw, beats the pressure with the dribble. Gets in the lane. This is off for Jarvie. Now Kershaw. Jarvie tracks down the loose ball. Here's Ingiani being watched by Sifanelli. Salmon, team's leading score. 
Pulls up from 16. Off the mark, no good. Rebound David Moe. Moe pushes it. Beautiful feed. Terrific fast break as Gutch has found Gopperop for the lay-in. Grimes big guy's doing a good job of running the floor. And that's a second nice patch by Gutches this game. And there it is. Basket creates a turnover with the press. And now Grimes a 10-point lead and the basketball. Marcellus did a good job of after it blossomed to an 11-point lead for Grimes earlier in this quarter to cutting it to six. And now it's back up to double digits and Grimes having a chance to have their largest lead of the game with a basket. Mo pulls up from 15 and he's fouled. Charge that one to Kyle Brown. His second, team's second. And David Moe will step to the free throw line to make this, try to make this anyway, a 12 point advantage for the Cobras. Moe, the leading scorer coming into the game for Bishop Grimes at 15 points a game, has been held to five here so far, make it six for the free throw. This was a 32 25 game at the half. It's now 41 30 with 4.20 left to play here in the third quarter. David Moe has scored in double figures in 11 of the 14 games this season. He's now up to seven, and it's a 12-point Cobra's lead. Salmon in between three different guys, ripped free by Sifanelli. Now Bradford skies in, can't get the dunk to go. Rebound to Salmon, and now they push. Brown, back to Jarvie. Salmon open for the moment, but they call him for a travel. If Bradford would have thrown that down, I might have walked out of here and walked out tonight. <laughs> he took off on one foot about you know, a half a step underneath the hoop and almost threw it down with one hand. He is an, an electric player, no doubt about it. 12 point lead right now for the Cobras. Beautiful feed from Bradford as David Moe finishes. He now has nine on the verge of that 12th double digit performance of the season. Largest lead of the night for Grimes. A near five second violation. Smart play by Regalia to just fire it off Gopperop. Arop nearly stole it, but. This is a danger zone right now for Marcellus. It really is. Having a tough time settling on anything offensively, and you know, this press right now has been wreaking havoc on him. Regalia able to get it in. Now Jarvie, two on one, touch pass to Kyle Brown. That's how you break the press. How do you beat it? By, you know, not putting the ball on the floor, passing your way through it, and that time, great job by Brown of finishing it off. There's Bradford. Now to Sifanelli, he'll try a three, and he got it. Paul Sifanelli, David Sifanelli, rather. <laughs> with the big three, and it's a 15-point advantage in another five-second violation, second one we've seen tonight. And Grimes really is, yes, they're, they're uh, you know not allowing you that much to get it in, but they're gonna give you that pass to throw it into the corner, and you know, if you're Marcellus, you, you gotta get the ball in. Sifanelli shooting the ball better this year, known as a defensive specialist, but he can hit that three, and he showed it right there. There's a steal off the inbounds. Kershaw taking it in, draws the contact from Moe off glass and in for Matt Kershaw. The kid's got game and he's only a sophomore. He's got 11. Gay looking to answer, doesn't go. Kyle Brown the rebound. Big possession here for Marcellus. Down 13. Chance to stay within striking distance. Kershaw has it knocked out of bounds. He wanted the, the foul, no call. I should say the student section wanted the foul and no call. Broke the press and went right at Gopperop and TJ Bradford down low. Kershaw, short with the three. Gay the rebound, he saves it to Bradford. Bradford pushing, nice dish. And Gopperop throws it down. How many guys on this team can dunk? <laughs> A lot. 49-34 lead, 2.25 left, 2.28 left to play, and that's going to call Marcellus' timeout right yeah. now. Scott Cotter wants to talk it over. You said it a moment ago, Mario. Danger zone time for Marcellus. We'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on LocalSYR.com.
Our Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. Welcome back to Marcellus High School. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco with you. So glad you could join us. 2.28 to play here in the third quarter. Grimes has opened up a 15-point lead. Remember, it was just a seven-point game at the half. It was as low as six uh, after, you know, Bishop Grimes went up by 11 early in the third quarter. Marcellus did a good job, came back, cut it to six, but since then it's been all Bishop Grimes on both ends of the floor, Steve. So many athletes on this Grimes roster. They come at you in waves. And they are relentless on defense. But they've been doing a good job of, you know, Marcellus in, the, in that first half was, was forcing them to outside shots. But in this second half and, and over to this last three minutes, Grimes has been attacking and it's been leading to turnovers and, and easy baskets. Bradford, great play on the steal. As he read that, wasn't even his man. Gus O'Connell loses it out of bounds. And Marcellus gets the ball back. Kershaw trying to work it up against Bradford. Not an easy task, sophomore on senior. And here comes the double team. There's a push from behind on Mo. He doesn't like the call, but that was the right call. Definitely made contact. And that's what I'm talking about there. You, you have, you think, you know, you're going one-on-one -on -one with one guy. Kershaw thought, you know, T.J. Bradford's the only guy guarding me right now. And as soon as he went to maybe try and spin, who's there? But David Moe, a six-foot-four, six-foot-five, five kid to try and uh, try and work your way through. Third foul against Moe, so he'll come to the bench. Here's Jarvi working against Cook, takes it in, was looking for Brown. The ball finds its way to Kershaw. Now in Gianni, in between two different players, loses it. Gay comes up with it, and we do have a whistle and a foul. And that's going to go against Kyle Brown. Number three on Brown, third team foul for the Mustangs. 49-34, 156 left to play here in this third quarter. Bishop Grimes leading. Looking for their eighth win in their last nine games. Grimes has felt, it's felt like Grimes has been in control all night long. And, and I'd say that the, the scoreboard finally reflects that as the Cobras have been able to open up a 15 point lead, trying to add to it. Regalia the rebound. Bradford pokes it away from behind. Here's the double team. And now the Mustangs have numbers if they hurry. Brown passes off for Ingiani. Great hustle by the Cobras to get back. Now Ingiani, back up top for Kershaw. 15 to shoot, Kershaw resets the offense. Now Jarvi for three, got it. Tristan Jarvi with five points. And Marcellus pulls back to within 12. Marcellus had the patience that time and it led to a good look for Jarvi and he canned it. Bradford drives and draws the foul. Nobody can stay in front of him, he is so good getting to the basket. Got just will check back in for this Bishop Grimes team. Gay and Arop both take a seat for the Cobras. And Denton also checking in for Grimes. So it's Denton, Bradford, Gutchess, Cook, and O'Connell on the floor for the Cobras. And Denton stepped out of bounds. It's an opportunity here for Marcellus to cut it to single digits again and 102 left to play here in the quarter. Down by 12. Mustangs have certainly made some key shots tonight when they've needed to. To stop a big run, and there's a, an opportunity. Jarvi lays it in off the long pass from Kyle Brown. Jarvi now with five quick points. He's up to seven, and it's back to a 10-point game. So Marcellus hanging around. Bradford looking to make it 13 and does. <laughs> Boy, that's a dagger from T.J. Bradford. If you're Marcellus, I'm going to say I'm going to give up that shot, and Bradford buried it right in the defender's face. 
Big shot from the senior guard, one of four seniors in the starting lineup for this team. Kershaw between the legs. Now off to Ingiani, under 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Ingiani, Kershaw, extra pass to Jarvie, and it's batted out of bounds by Denton with 12 on the shot clock. Maybe one too many passes that time. Uh, afraid to, sh to shoot it, but they will maintain possession of the basketball down by a score of 52-39, 21 seconds to play here in the third. Grimes moves so well on defense, they make, it, make that split second decision. And if you pass up the shots too late, somebody's in your face. And that's what happened right there to Jarvie. He dumps it down to Regalia, and a whistle and a foul with five on the shot clock. So Marcel is fortunate there. Shot clock now goes off as Marcel's will trigger it in with 13.7 to play. Tristan Jarvie plays it out for Regalia. They swing it up top. Now they reverse it. Kershaw pulls up and he draws the foul. Denton charged with it. Kershaw has best, definitely been their go-to guy here in this third quarter. Uh, attacking, not settling for an outside shot. And he steps to the line to shoot two. As that time the help side D just a little late getting over, sliding uh, down to the baseline that time uh, for Bishop Grimes. You mentioned Luke and Gianni missed four games before the Christmas break. Matt Kershaw missed three games before the Christmas break due to injury. First free throw is off the mark, no good. He's averaging just about 10 points per game on the season, but 16 points per game over the course of his last five. So Matt Kershaw's really come on strong. This kid's got a bright future, as you mentioned, Mario, just a sophomore. He's got 11 here tonight. Leading the way right now for this Marcellus Mustangs team. Second free throw from Kershaw. That's off the mark as well. Rebound to Grimes. Three seconds. Two. Cook puts it up before the buzzer. Off the mark doesn't go. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. A quarter that was dominated by the Cobras. Bishop Grimes has opened up a double-digit lead. 52-39 back with the fourth quarter after this. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on LocalSYR.com. Our Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more mortgage on your new home home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Make your home your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. We're back at Marcellus High School, three quarters in the books here. Cobras from Bishop Grimes with a 52-39 lead, and Bishop Grimes will get the first possession of the fourth quarter. Grimes looking to improve to 11 and four mm -hmm. on the season, following a two and two start. Cobras kind of pulling away in that quarter, outscoring 20 to 14 in that quarter to build this double-digit lead. Russell Connor will trigger it into T.J. Bradford. Bradford leading all scores right now. Alley oop to David Moe. How about that? Skies and throws it down. Fourth dunk of the game for the Cobras. The lead is 15, and that was drawn up in between the quarters by Bob McKenney. Three pointer off the mark, no good for O'Connell. And good hustle by both sides. Gutchis unable to save it. And Marcellus will get possession. O'Connell was looking to end it, I think, with that with a three-point attempt. Love the play. I, I was trying Love to I was trying to count up points, and I look up and I see David Moe skying for another jam. Love the play call there, <laughs> in between quarters. Bob McKinney draws up the alley oop, and uh, 
Boy, they executed that to perfection. The back screen and Mo skied for the alley-oop and threw it down. Nice pass from Bradford. Bradford's done a little bit of everything tonight. I'd say that looked like you back in your day, but you were the for the settle in for the outside jumper. I was the guy throwing the pass, <laughs> yeah, <right>. Mario. <laughs> As Matt Kershaw tripped from behind. Fifth team foul against the Cobras. As David Cifinelli checks back in for the visitors. Gus O'Connell takes a seat. So Mo and Cifinelli both on the court, both playing with three personals. Kershaw being watched by Bradford. Kershaw. Leaner doesn't go. Brown muscles it back up and in. He's been steady all night long. Kyle Brown, eight points. Here's Mo in traffic. Lays it up and in. Friendly roll for David Mo. So after that slow Boy, start, he he's fire here in the second half. He's got 13. Yeah. At three at halftime, 10 here in you know, pretty much a quarter. 12th game this season in double figures for David Moe. See, you break the press there, and you gotta attack, tack down to the baseline. And instead they turn it over. Cook to Gutchess, three on two. Bradford throws another one down. Fifth dunk of the night for the Cobras. He's got 20. Fifth game this season of 20 or more points. Cifinelli steals it. Mo, three from the corner, short with it. Brown the rebound. This is the constant pressure, I think, has continuously started to wear down this Marcellus basketball team. You know, guys like Kershaw, Jarvey, and... And Brown, Brown again <laughs> scores down low. Ten points for Kyle Brown. When they've got it to him down low, he's been able to put he it in the He does good basket. things. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting it to him. And credit Bishop Grimes' defense. It's not an easy thing to try and get the ball down to him when Grimes is throwing, you know, waves at you. Oh, I feel bad for these cards. I mean, yeah. they, the, the, yeah. the pressure has been relentless tonight. Uh, Mo for three, no good. Brown bats it out, but right to Bradford, who pulls up from 17, nothing but net from TJ Bradford. Man, this kid's putting on a show. 22 for the senior guard now. And it's been a smooth 22, you know. Couple of pull-up jumpers. He doesn't uh, take bad dumps. shots. No. He's always in no. control, doesn't no. take bad shots. Gotten in the lane, dished out a couple of nice assists. A solid game for T.J. Bradford, the senior. And right now it's a 60 to 43 lead for this Bishop Grimes basketball team. Bishop Grimes looking to bounce back from Sunday's loss to Bishop Ludden. It was a 56-45 loss. They went one for 22 from three, and they only yeah, lost I mean, by 11. Defensively, they, it was a great defensive basketball game. They just couldn't put the ball in the hoop when I, when I was there. As Ludden's girls also won that game as well over uh, Bishop Grimes, 74-62. And they're off to another impressive uh, run right now, the Ludden girls team. I think they've won 10 straight. Ludden boys team a little underrated this year as well. They got off to a slow start. I, I, but for another team that, that needed to, you know, gain some confidence. They, they didn't have an easy schedule to start like off we have as to, well. I feel like we have to throw out the Albany Academy game for both <laughs> these teams. They are <laughs> yeah. so good. Uh, Grimes and Ludden both uh, got blown out by Albany Academy. There's a steal. Here's a three-pointer on its way from Kershaw. Doesn't go. Rebound to Mo And uh, Bradford in transition between two different defenders. That time he's blocked by the rim. <laughs> he's getting a little tired. <laughs> I don't blame him. He's been everywhere tonight. Coach McKinney said, just lay it in. <laughs> Bob McKinney tells TJ Bradford to slow it down, so he does. If you could jump like that, would you just no, lay it in every no, time? No, I would not. I would definitely would not. If I could make a highlight real layup, I would probably do that as well. Mo tied up by Tristan Jarvie, and the ball will head over to Marcellus on the possession arrow. 4.22 to play. Grimes in complete control now, up 17. You're looking at this game, Steve, as Corsellus breaks the press. We'll get back into that in a minute. Jumper from Jarvie doesn't go. Rebound to Grimes. Here's Sifanelli. Drives the lane. Passes off for a Rop. Has trouble handling it, and he's fouled by Tristan Jarvie. 
the point I was trying to make, if you're this Marcellus team and if you're Coach Cotter, you can't get down on yourself after a game like this. You know, for what, three quarters pretty much that, you know, any time Bishop Grimes was thro throwing like nice runs at you, you were able to respond. You showed that you could bounce back. It was just maybe that final knockout punch that Grimes has given here over this last five minutes of this basketball game. It's kind of put it away. Three from Gay, no good. Marcellus looking to run. Jarvie being watched by Magushu. Kershaw along the baseline, pulls up, rims out, draws the foul from Gay. And that'll send Matt Kershaw to the free throw line. I, I'm with you. I think, Mar you know, Mario, Marcellus has nothing to be ashamed of tonight. Uh, Grimes came at him in waves. And again, every time it looked like Grimes was going to pull away, Marcellus had an answer. But eventually the Cobra's talent and athleticism uh, wore down Marcellus tonight. But nothing for this team to be ashamed of. And remember, you know, Marcellus starts four juniors yeah. and a sophomore. Okay. Grimes has four seniors and a sophomore. That, that does make a difference with the experience factor. And again, you know, the Grimes kids are, are a year older and a year better in some ways. And it's only going to get you better when sectional play rolls around. And we talked about Class B, if it be, you know. And you're going to find out your last two games of the year when you got Skinny Atlas and you have West Hill. You're going to find out that these are the games that you're playing with right now against the Bishop Grimes team that is going to make you better for those last two games of the year. Kershaw down with 13. There's a timeout. We'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on localsyr.com. Your health club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of ellipticals for all fitness needs. Take the hassle out of working out. All products sold by us are delivered by us and maintained by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. We get it. Your morning is busy. Between getting up, getting your kids up, and getting out the door, count on us to get you the news fast. It's one less thing to worry about. We're ready for you. The morning news on News Channel 9 starts at 4:30. We're back at Marcellus High School, 3.54 to play in the fourth quarter. Mustangs down by 15. You, you talked about, you know, Class A versus B. Remember, Bishop Grimes competes in Class A. Uh, Marcellus is in B. So, you know, this is a, a great experience for the kids from Marcellus. They're most likely, barring yeah. some sort of collapse down the stretch, they're making the playoffs. They're going to sectionals. And, and they're not going to see Bishop Grimes no. again. So a, a chance to kind of see where they stack up against one of the better teams in Class A. And, and you look at the... You know, division that they're in in that Liberty American one score from tonight, West Hill 160 to 40 uh, over Mexico. And it looks like, you know, they're going to wrap up uh, the title with that win, I do believe, tonight. So, you know, it's going to run through, as we've seen, it's going to run through Skinny Atlas and it's going to run through West Hill this year. And Marcellus, with games like this, it's going to prepare you to face that relentless pressure when it comes sectional playoff time that Grimes has been able to throw them tonight. And the first meeting uh, earlier this year, West Hill won at 40, or uh, 60 to 43, rather. Uh, but again, you know, that was really early in the year, yeah. and, and Marcellus was dealing with uh, two key injuries at the time as Gay off the mark in the lane, gets it back. Grimes fighting for it, a Rop fouled. Let's see who they charge it to. Charge the foul to Salmon. On the flip side, you look at Grimes' schedule, you know, down the stretch. Talk, Coach talked about it. He's got, you know, a handful of games, what, six games in 15 days coming up here. You know, three of them are against teams, if it be an SAS, if it be a Ludden, uh, if it be a CBA. You know, teams that when it comes playoff time, that's who you're going to be seeing. Yeah, Grimes had to deal with a 12-day layoff because of the bad weather, various postponements. And they got to make up those games. So, yeah, they've got six games in 15 days to close out the regular season. And as a Rop makes a pair, now has nine. Obviously, they're not going to be seeing Ludden, uh, but you get the point, maybe in SAS when it comes playoff time. There's Kershaw. He's blocked by Gay. 3-13 to play in the fourth quarter. Grimes with a 17-point lead. And here comes T.J. Bradford back into the lineup. And Nate Gay heads to the bench. Kershaw to trigger it in. Gets it into Jarvie. Now Salmon turns around, short with it. Rebound to Arop, and here comes Bradford in transition, looking for Magushu, and the pass was kicked. Tough game for Salmon here. He's been in foul trouble. If it's not been in foul trouble, you know, he's been held to two points, came in, and their leading scorer averaging 11 points a game. 
been held to two only tonight. Again, that's a credit to this Grimes defense. As you said, he spent a good portion of the first half on the bench with the foul trouble. Just never was able to get into a rhythm tonight. And Mo fouled on the three-point attempt by Ingiani, and that will send David Mo to the charity stripe. Chance to equal his season average. Came in averaging 15 points per game. He's at 13 right now. Mo's been fantastic this year. Model of consistency for this team. Scoring in double figures in 12 of the 15 games. First free throw is good, and let's see if Mo can get to that 15-point mark. He does. And remember, he was fouled on the three-point attempt, so he'll get three. Mo makes all three. Give him 16. Lead is up to 20. Under three minutes to play here in the basketball game. You know, some may see the final score and think that this was a blowout from Definitely start to finish, not. but that was not the case. I mean, it was a one-point game at the end of the first quarter, seven-point game in halftime, and, you know, Grimes has pulled away over these last two quarters. Mo thinks about a three, drives the lane instead, kicks it out for Cifinelli, gets in close. Now Mo, extra pass, love the passing. Bradford had knocked away by Salmon. Now Salmon goes behind his back. Here's Jarvi. Down low for Brown. Boy, that kid is solid down low. You give him the I mean, ball, he's putting it in. Any, anywhere down on the blocks, and, and he's pretty up, much automatic. Knows how to use his body. He's got a dozen. Marcellus has two players in double figures. Kershaw leads the way with 13. A rop off the mark on the jumper. Jarvi pushes it up for Ingiani. We're under two minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Ingiani drives the lane. Somehow flips it up and in. Pretty move from Luke Ingiani. He was their leading scorer at halftime with seven. Those were his first two points of the second half. Ooh, and Ingiani called for the foul. Mo attacking again. And Ingiani trying to come across on the baseline and strip him. Caught his arm, and that'll send David Moe to the free throw line as it looks like Coach McKinney's going to clear the bench. But before he does, David Moe a chance for a couple more points. He's got 16 on the night. The lead 16 right now for the Cobras with 138 to play. And he drops in the first. And sure enough, everybody coming out, both sides clearing the benches. We got a Joseph White checking into the game, junior guard for Bishop Grimes, Jonathan Davis. Also into the game. Wholesale substitutions Along for both sides. Junior Colby Evans. And second free throw good from Mo. So he finishes the night with 18. He comes out. Deng Maui into the game for the Cobras. Anthony Felgitano in there as well for Bishop Grimes. Marcellus also going to the bench right now. Near steal. Brayton Johnson tracks it down for Marcellus and a whistle and a travel with 113 to play. So as both teams clear their bench, try and get you Marcellus as Bryce Kelly is checked into the game. Brayton Johnson. There's Joe White strong to the basket. Now kicks it out for Anthony Felgitano. He's off the mark and a rebound to Marcellus. There's Bryce Kelly, number 24 for the Mustangs, Aaron Pass, and Grimes will get it back with under a minute to play, 51.8 left. 67-49, Bishop Grimes going to improve to 11-4 on the season. There's Maui, leaner in the lane, doesn't go. 
Kelly the rebound, passes off to Brayton Johnson. Could be the final possession of the night for the Mustangs. Johnson steps in from 17, doesn't go. White battles for the rebound, he rips it away from Johnson. No foul, Gitano, nice dish <laughs> toward cutting Colby Evans. Nice way for this game to end for the Cobras. 20 point advantage for Grimes, White knocks it away. And with 7.5 left, Marcellus will keep possession. It's a pretty fast break from the Cobras. <laughs> All the guys on the bench standing and cheering the guys on. Here's Kayser beats the buzzer. Mike Kayser gets into the scoring column for the Mustangs. And that's your final. Bishop Grimes improves to 11 and 4 on the season with a 69 to 51 victory. We're going to step aside. We'll wrap this one up right after this. You're watching High School Boys Basketball on localsyr.com. Health Club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of treadmills for all fitness levels. All treadmills sold by us are maintained by us and delivered by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. The newest way to experience SU basketball, and it's all decided by you. Your questions, our insight, live. Join News Channel 9 Sports Director Stephen Fonte, Orange Nation Interactive, Wednesday at 3, only on localsyr.com. News Channel 9. Alexa, what's the news? I'm Chris Cacciano. We're putting you on the lookout for our Fugitive of the Week. Plus, we're tracking local jobs with a new company that's hiring... Find News Channel 9 on Amazon Echo. Learn how at localsyr.com. Empower Federal Credit Union is proud to announce a $4 million gift back to our members. Our members share in our success because they are the reason for our success. The more loans and savings accounts you have with Empower, the more we give back. The mortgage on your new home, the home equity line of credit for those home improvements, the auto loan for your new ride, and the MasterCard with the rewards for life's everyday purchases. The Empower Give Back, $4 million to our members for every eligible dollar they borrowed or saved throughout the year. Earn more as a member at Empower. Live Doppler 9, always tracking, always scanning. But what does that mean for you? It's the only live local radar in central New York. Seeing storms that no one else can. Right down to your street. So you know exactly what's coming your way. Just one more reason. The News Channel 9 storm team is central New York's most accurate. Get Central New York's most accurate forecast in the palm of your hand. Download the News Channel 9 Live Doppler 9 app. Search WSYR in the App Store. Make your home your house club with Syracuse Fitness Store. Syracuse Fitness Store offers the best selection of ellipticals for all fitness needs. Take the hassle out of working out. All products sold by us are delivered by us and maintained by us. Stop in today to Syracuse Fitness Store, located on Erie Boulevard East between Midler and Thompson. Stephen Fonte, Mario Sacco, back with you here at Marcellus High School as we wrap this one up between the Mustangs and the Bishop Grimes Cobras. Bishop Grimes comes away with a 69-51 victory. Grimes improving to 11-4 on the season. They've now won eight of their last nine, while Marcellus drops to 7-8, and eight, now 6-3 and three in their last nine games. As we look at the scoring, uh, Mario, T.J. Bradford, again, best player on the court tonight. He was fantastic, finished with 22 points, led all scores. David Moe chipped in with 18. Gaparop had nine. Nate Gay added six points off the bench for the Cobras. Three points apiece for David Cifanelli, Jack Gutchess, Nate Cook, Gus O'Connell, and Colby Evans uh, finished with that last bucket of the game on the, the pretty fast break. Boy, Bradford did everything right tonight, both scoring the basketball, setting up his teammates, playing great defense. He was fantastic. Balanced 11 points first half, 11 points second half. David Moe got rolling in that second half. He had 15 points, as you mentioned, 18 for the game. But it was the pressure and the confidence uh, of T.J. Bradford of attacking the basket finding his open guys when they were there and you know doing it all scoring pretty much at will. Matt Kershaw led the way for the Mustangs with 13. Kyle Brown loved the way that kid plays. Kyle Brown chipped in uh, with 12 down low for Marcellus. Luke Ingiani finished with nine. Seven points for Tristan Jarvie. Grayson Hogue chipped in with four and then two points apiece for Jared Salmon, Connor Regalia 
and Mike Kayser scoring right before the buzzer. Jared Salmon came into this game uh, as the team's leading scorer for Marcellus. He was taken out of the game uh, due to foul trouble early on and, and taken out of the game really throughout uh, due to that pressure defense from Bishop Grimes. They did a great job. He never really could get into yeah. a rhythm tonight. But as you mentioned, this is a game that you, you can't get down on yourself. You, you face the pressure for three quarters for almost, you know, full three quarters. You hung in with this Bishop Grimes team that last year lost in the section championship is probably going to make a run toward playing for a section title again this year. You were down by one after the first quarter. You trailed 32-25 at the half, but it was just the relentless pressure of the Cobras that, you know, finally wore this Marcellus basketball team down. And I was impressed, as you mentioned, with the Brown kid down low when he got it down low, you know, scored, scored the basket. Kershaw at times showing, you know, maturity for only a sophomore to be able to attack that zone and excuse me, to be able to attack the pressure and, and he scored in double figures tonight. So you got a lot of things to build on as you come down the stretch here uh, of the season and, and waiting down the stretch. It is a West Hill and is a skinny Atlas on your schedule as you're seven and eight and, and look to make a run toward a sectional playoff appearance. And remember, so many of these guys are coming back next year. I mean, of the eight guys who scored tonight, uh, only two of them are seniors. I mean, they've got a lot coming back. So again, this is a, a process for Scott Cotter, and this is a team that's uh, right around the 500 mark. They're going to make playoffs and uh, see what they can do when they get into the Class B sectionals. As for Bishop Grimes, uh, Grimes looks like a contender right Definitely. now. Again, the, the one loss in this this streak was to, to Bishop Ludden, who's a good team, and Grimes didn't play all that well no. uh, that night. Uh, this is a team that, that seems to have the pieces. They have the, the talent. They have the athleticism. They certainly have the defense. You know, maybe the outside shooting's the one thing that you know maybe a, a knock against this team if they can if they can straighten that out this team could really do some damage come tournament time but once again you're maybe you don't have to take that outside shot with the style that this bishop grimes team plays they they force you into that you know making you go 90 feet top to bottom all the way and running you ragged it seems and you know it just wore this marcellus team down and, and that's what they're going to try and do come playoff time and that's what they weren't able to do last year in the section championship game against a very good Utica Notre Dame team. But if they can do that to teams, you know, they're going to be hard out when sectional playoffs rolls around. All right, so that's uh, all the time we have for you tonight. Again, Bishop Grimes wins it 69-51. Our next broadcast comes your way next week, Wednesday night. The JD girls on the road at Auburn for a 7 o'clock tip. For my partner, Mario Sacco, and for everyone at News Channel 9, thanks so much for watching. You've been watching high school boys basketball on localsyr.com. Have a great night, everybody.